historical setting for the novel Yang Shan is East China in the middle of the 19th century. This video presentation gives a brief sketch of that time for readers wishing to know more about the history underlying the novel. When the novel begins, the ruling dynasty in China is the Qing. Established over 200 years earlier by nomad armies of Manchu horsemen called Bannermen that invaded out of Manchuria and toppled the native Ming dynasty in 1644. The Manchu conquerors settled down together with the native Chinese occupying the forbidden city in Peking and placing garrisons of bannermen in cities throughout the land. Manchu officers ruled side by side with Chinese mandarins. The Manchu left undisturbed the traditional Confucian bureaucracy as well as the Chinese system of government with a high-level cabinet that advised the emperor and various ministries guiding public affairs. A governor administered each province which was divided into circuits under a Daotai responsible for public works. Circuits were further divided into several levels including prefectures and districts. A district was similar to a county in America and was overseen by a district magistrate. The seventh Qing Emperor came to power in 1851 with the reign name Xianfeng. Only 19 years old, he was overwhelmed, some said, by the legions of troubles assailing China. The city of Shanghai was administered in 1860 by a Daotai named Wu Xu, who reported to the provincial governor. Early in the dynasty, the country prospered, but in later years suffered decline under corrupt rulers and unprecedented population growth, which led to uprisings and numberless refugees. In the 19th century, Westerners came to China seeking tea and silk. Westerners were not particularly welcome in China and were confined to Canton factories, from where they traded opium for Chinese goods and smuggled opium along the China coast. In the early 1840s, China resisted the opium trade and was defeated in a humiliating war with the British, which contributed further to Chinese decline. The treaty that the Chinese signed with the British permitted trade in opium and allowed Westerners to take up residence in Chinese coastal towns, treaty ports, including Shanghai. Hong Kong was ceded to the British. In the late 1840s, a Chinese sect of Christians in South China rose up against the Manchu, led by Hong Xiuquan, who believed himself to be the younger brother of Jesus Christ. Calling themselves Taiping, the rebel armies fought their way north and in 1853 captured the city of Nanking, making it the Taiping heavenly capital, Tianjin. In the years following, imperial armies were powerless to prevent the spread of Taiping armies throughout East China and down the Yangtze toward Shanghai. Under the privileges of the early treaty, Westerners thrived in Canton and Shanghai, accumulating great wealth and trade. However, the Chinese still refused to deal with foreign powers as equals and annoyed the British with restrictions on foreign trade. In another war in 1857, the Chinese were again defeated and made to agree to another treaty, signed in Tianjin in 1858. But when the British returned to North in 1859 for ratifications of the treaty, Chinese forces under Prince Sung soundly beat them at the Dagu forts. The 
next year, allied with the French, the British returned with a force of over 20,000, intent on compelling acceptance of the treaty. When the novel Yangshan begins in April of 1860, the British and French are sailing north from Hong Kong to Peking to force the Emperor to ratify their treaty. And the Taiping rebels are active west of Nanking, north and south of the Yangtze, and eastward along the approaches to Suzhou, Hangzhou, and Shanghai. Shanghai has become a locus of these contending powers, native and foreign, and the Qing dynasty appears ready to collapse, powerless to oppose either foreigners or rebels. As the last of the British Marines protecting Shanghai depart for the north, the helpless Shanghai Mandarins despair of finding any scheme to save their city. It is at this moment when the fates of China and Shanghai hang in the balance that Fletcher Thorson Wood returns to China aboard the American clipper ship Essex.